Hello, it's October 11th, 2016. I'm going to give you an update on the text board progress as well as my pick and place machine. Uh, I got the boards back for this text board. This is a uh, Raspberry Pi hat that has a lot of I.O. pins on it and a bunch of functionality that the museum in Albuquerque needed for their B-52. It's also for a friend of mine that lives up the road here. He's got an off-grid uh, water turbine and he wants to do some monitoring of that. Uh, and I have some use for this around here as well. So I designed this as a multi-purpose board. It can be used for anything. Uh, it's got a lot of functionality. If you want to look at what that is, do look at the uh, GitHub show notes and you can see that. A uh, board like this has about 200 parts on it. Um, combination of surface mount and through hole parts. Most of the through hole parts are connectors. And... Um, it would take me, if I did this by hand, it took me about four hours to do. So I finally broke down and I started, I picked up my pick and place machine project that I started about five years ago. And I really made a lot of progress on that in the last three weeks. I'm going to talk about that, the progress I've made uh, so far. And uh, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. The, what I'm going to talk about today is the, how I kind of put together my pick and place machine. I'll uh, show you a little bit about how it's working, and then uh, hopefully all the parts came in from DigiKey the last couple of days. I'll actually uh, start populating this board and see if it's going to work. So let's get, go ahead and get started. Well, here's the text interface hat for the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi here kind of fits on the back side. All the external connectors on the Raspberry Pi are accessible. There's a little uh, about one inch OLED display and it has four mechanical relays on it, two SSRs, an array of uh, 16 drivers for LEDs. Here's the, all the analog inputs are up along the top. Over here it uses an ATF automotive fuse. And uh, over here it has two user interface buttons. It's a two-layer board, and the schematic and the board layout files are on the GitHub site. Well, I needed a way to mount this in the um, pick-and-place machine. So I had a big piece of acrylic, it's a quarter-inch acrylic. I took it over to Hopkins Engineering, and they put it on a laser cutter, and I uh, cut out uh, this array of uh, <coughs> M3 holes. And a couple of slots and then I started working on a feeder so I 3d printed this after I got an idea from a German website on a do-it-yourself pick-and-place machine I kind of took their design and, and added some features to it but it's a basically a you know, it has a lower piece that's all made out of one piece and it has this, these slots in here and it has these covers on it that are actually kind of loose and that makes it so you can adjust the tension on the individual trays itself and I have some 0603 resistors here now so by tightening those screws you kind of clamp down the top and these ones that have a deep hole are for um, you know ICs here's <coughs> these top squares where those are for ICs itself and over here here's the board clamp mechanism the corner piece is flexible so I can get the alignment kind of in the machine aligned to the machine mechanics and what you're going to end up doing is you put your board in here and these little sliders are going to adjust for any kind of board size then you can kind of tighten it down and, get, and hold it while you put the parts on and then the pick and place head is going to come over and kind of do this action on it One last thing here, I've been using this thing here. I'm going to give a shout out to Loctite for this version of super glue. It's called Ultra Gel. This stuff is excellent. The lid comes off all the time. It doesn't stick on there. It has a, a nice uh, mechanism that you actually squeeze the bottle with those blue handles. You can get super precise. It doesn't run. It's more like a glue, a goo, and that uh, works pretty well. Here's the corner where I do my little production of my boards you can see there on the right that's my uh, surface mount oven that I put a temperature controller in my 3d printer 
And here is a original shape Oko that I've purchased a uh, thousand millimeter uh, X rails for. So I extended the X motion on it. I'm driving it with a, an old HP uh, PC and I have a four axis uh, uh, driver board over there. One of the first things I had to overcome on this was the fact that I was getting racking in the uh, X direction. So I added a, a second stepper motor to the back side of the X axis and another belt. And then I started working on the, uh, pit, the uh, pick and place head design. And I added that and mounted that inside the Z axis motion here. And you can see a syringe there that's for the solder paste. And that little uh, cylindrical thing there, that's my USB camera. And then over on the right is, that's near my hand, is a hollow core stepper motor. I'll go ahead and show you that over here. Well, let me show you this feeder first. So this is the pick and place head. I got these on eBay about four years ago. It's a spring loaded design and uh, makes it so it won't crash the machine or crush components. And here's what, I think this is like a NEMA 12 or NEMA 9 stepper motor. It's hollow core, so I can actually pull a vacuum right through there. But I had to attach that, uh, that uh, feeder to the stepper motor. So I went over to Halk Engineering and Rob spun up this little adapter for me. And we put a, a magnet on it. So the, uh, that, that feeder uh, attaches directly to the stepper motor. And it's actually pretty hard to get off. That magnet's really strong. So the, I've modified this so that the Z-axis can alternate between the syringe, the paste dispenser, and the vacuum pickup. And I needed to add another axis here, so I used three of those axes for the motion, and then I have a, a, a rotational axis as well. And <clears throat> I was almost able to get it all to work on one parallel port on this old PC, but I had to buy another one. I couldn't exactly, uh, I needed one more output to actually uh, toggle the power for the um, solder paste dispenser. Well, this is it here. Uh, looks like a giant mess, but it actually worked pretty well. Okay, well, that wraps it up for today. Uh, next time, I'm going to go ahead and show you the pick and place machine, kind of zooming around, locating parts. Uh, we will check out the alignment of the, uh, the camera, at least. And we will um, look and see how well it hits the center of components as well as the solder pads. Uh, so let's uh, hope you continue to join me in my adventure to not have to place 0603 parts on these uh, surface mount boards any longer. All right, thanks for watching.